remember that in Rattus there were six um, class cards uh, which were included with the game, and they were used in every single time that you played the game. The first expansion to Rattus, which is Rattus Pied Piper, admittedly mine is, uh, uh, I think, Polish edition of the game, but it's language independent. Um, uh, in, in, in Rattus uh, Pied Piper, we have a further 12 new class cards, two of each um, class type. So we have two of the royalty, two of the royalty, two of the peasants, um, two of the religious, and, and so on, um, two of the military. Um, and uh, so it adds a whole load of new options, because you can mix these in. You could take one class card of each different type, so one royalty, one military, one bourgeoisie, you know, or you could just take a complete random mix, in which case you might end up with three bourgeoisie in one set, or, uh, you know, two military, or, which, which makes it... Um, works slightly differently because then if a military token comes, uh, a rat shows a military marker on it, which means that the person with a military card in front of them is going to lose a cube. Suddenly they're losing two cubes if they have both military cards in front of them. So it does change things up um, a fair amount, but what it certainly does do is add variety. So let's have a little look at what comes in the box of Rattus Pied Piper. So these are the cards from Rattus Pied Piper expansion and you can see that there are additional components as well which I've put alongside the relevant cards. So obviously our central character uh, in this expansion is the Pied Piper himself. Um, he, he's magic, you'll notice there's two of each class type in this expansion. Now what the Pied Piper does is it means that when you use him, you can move one of your cubes from one region to another region, and he will take rat tokens with him, so he will lead the rats into another token. It's always nice in Rattus when they use a recognisable character, like they did with those promo Robin Hood, Joan of Arc, Dracula cards, and they make the activity suit the sort of fictionalised um, account, so the Pied Piper leading rats is a nice touch. The other magic character that we have is this um, wizardy type character here who can place potions and we have these potions tokens here um, which we can place on the board. These are placed under cubes and when the cube is killed you can instead lose the potion so it basically gives the cube an extra life. This character over here he lets you place a token on the board and what the region that this token is in um, I believe you can't place, let me just have a look at the rules that I've pasted onto the back. Uh, no rats can be added to this region and what you're doing is placing a bishop token on there. So where the, the region with this bishop token in, you cannot add any rats to that region and you may have two of these on the board. Um, what we have here is the nun and she works sort of in a similar way. Um, but there are three nun pieces that could be on the board at any one time. What they do is reduce the population by one for the purposes of activating rats. So they mean that the rats are less likely to activate if there is a nun in that region. Up here we have this character and he can build walls. So we have these wall tokens that you can place between regions and they stop anything moving between those regions such as the plague piece or cubes or rats, nothing can move through a space with a wall. We have this lady here and in this one if you have a um, cubes in the largest sort of connected area of any of the players then you get to add additional cubes on your turn. So she gives you a benefit for spreading out essentially. Um, this character over here, as cubes are killed you get to place cubes of your own colour into the regions to replace them. This guy here, you can place cubes of your own colour onto him and they stay on this card uh, and you can keep on adding more and more until you have quite a pool on there and they're going to stay on there until another player takes the card and when another player takes the card they take all your cubes off and place them into one region on the board. So it's a way of getting additional cubes onto the board although you may not be able to control where they go. Um, although if, if you still have this card at the end of the game then you're going to get the opportunity to place them um, 
actually that's that's not correct uh, the player to your left is going to place them onto the board so you never have control over that when i keep turning over to look at these little rules that's because i paste up my cards for ratus because i have so many of them um, that i want to keep track of what the rules are so uh, so i have little rules explanations on the back of each of them to make sure i don't make mistakes like i just did with that one right if we shift over here then and look at the remaining ones so we have the bourgeoisie characters here so this character lets you, instead of placing cubes as you normally would, you get to place cubes onto regions where you have the majority. This guy lets you swap cubes from one region to another. Any cube on the board can be swapped over with another one. The chivalry pieces, as with all the chivalry cards in the game, allow you to move the plague extra spaces, not just one space. And he lets you place an additional rat when you're adding rats to adjacent regions. And this guy, uh, again, lets you move additional spaces with the plague piece, but he lets you choose which order the rats activate. So you get to look at them and choose which order they activate instead of activating them in a random order as you normally would. So those are the cards in the Pied Piper expansion. For me, this is still the essential expansion for Rattus. Although it's the first expansion, it's been around for a few years now, we've had several since. This is the one that I would search out if you're going to get one expansion for Rattus. And the reason for that is because there are 12 class cards there which just um, expand the variety in the game massively. Rather than just playing with that same six cards that we played with in the base game, we now have a choice of 18. So we've trebled our choice and that gives us so many more possible combinations of cards. Um, additionally, these cards, these new ones, the, uh, the, the, the way that they work is very simple. None of those cards are complicated. They're pretty easy to grasp. Um, the additional components are, are nice. It's nice to add a few more bits onto the board. Admittedly, once you start adding in extra expansions, you've got even more pieces and suddenly the board can get a little bit cluttered and it all, can all become a little bit fiddly. But just with the base game and Rattus Pipe Piper, there's not too much going on. Um, and it works quite nicely. Now, if there's a downside to this, it's that the game balance is affected. Um, in the original game, those six basic roles um, worked quite nicely together. So you could always be pretty sure that there were going to be enough rats being added and enough cubes being added that rats were going to activate and start to kill stuff. But with certain combinations from Pied Piper and the base game, I found that sometimes you have a very peaceful game um, where you know nobody's really dying and the rats aren't really activating just because the powers are sort of preventing that from happening you know for example the bishop or the nuns which prevent essentially prevent rats from being um, from killing off the cubes um, so so there, there, there can be complete shifts in gameplay and that's not a problem if you're a regular player of the game because you see the game in all its different incarnations and you enjoy the variety but if you're a new player to the game and suddenly you're thrown into a game where nothing's really dying and nobody's really, you know, nothing's really being activated, then it seems like a pretty boring game. Um, so Pied Piper, maybe it's for more uh, regular players and for those new players you might be best off still just playing with that base game where everything's so nicely balanced. Um, but it's very nice to have the variety. Um, the cards are all beautifully illustrated as they are in the base game. The components are nice wooden components. So everything's good quality. Um, everything makes a lot of sense. And it's, it, it's nice and thankfully very, very simple. So I don't know how easy this is still to get hold of. Um, I, I've still seen copies around in the UK, but I don't know um, further afield how easy you're going to find it. Um, but Rattus Pie Piper is a good expansion for the game Rattus.